Good morning. A lot of parents are wary of medication side effects, but are overwhelmed about where to start and what to use for their child. So today we'll talk about how to figure out what will work best for your child in a systematic and organized way so you won't be overwhelmed. If we haven't met yet, I'm Melissa Corkum. I'm a certified life coach and parent coach, bringing you parenting advice that works so you can laugh more and yell less with your child. As always, if you're here live, comment here. If you're watching the replay, comment replay so we know you are here. Good morning, Betsy. If you're watching the replay on Instagram or YouTube, you are invited to join us in our private Facebook group, Essentially Connected, where we talk about all things adoption, foster care, essential oils, and ADHD. Before we get started, I am not a medical doctor, so this video is not intended to be taken as medical advice. If you have specific questions about medication or interactions, definitely consult your physician. All right, so if you were to Google natural remedies for ADHD, you will get 7.5 million hits. Obviously, this is a pretty hot topic um, with a lot of information, almost too much information. So when deciding to try a natural remedy, here are some tips and tricks so you can know if it's actually working and if it's worth continuing to spend time and money on. Number one, start keeping a daily behavior journal that tracks circumstances, food intake, supplements given, and behavior. I have a free template that I'm going to share with you at the end of the video. Number two, choose your remedies based on well-documented research. In this case, places like PubMed, where you can get scientific journal articles, is your friend. You can just Google PubMed.gov. Make a um, number three, make a whole list, brainstorm a list of things that you would like to try, all the things you've heard about, all the articles you've read, and then rank that list based on how big of an impact you think it will have and the ease of access of starting that natural remedy. Number four, try only one thing at a time. This is the hardest thing to do. Um, it does make a huge difference though, because that way you'll know which things are actually working and which things aren't, because you'll be using this kind of scientific method to figure it out. Remember in science, how in experiments, you could only have one variable, right? If there were more than one variable, you weren't sure which one was ex affecting your experiment. So choose one thing to change. You can't change all the things. I know we're desperate and we want to throw like all the spaghetti against the wall, but you can only choose one thing. And I recommend trying it for at least a month um, using that behavior journal to see if it's actually making a difference. You don't want to have to keep doing a supplement or some other therapy if it's not actually working. Y'all, we don't have time for that, right? And then lastly, um, at the end of the trial period, really look hard at evaluating um, and thinking about, is this something that's worth the time and money I'm putting into it based on the results that I'm getting? And then if it is, keep it in the regimen, add it to your routine permanently. And if it's not working, ditch it and move on. Just because something works for one family does not mean it's going to work for you. All right. So um, in a couple minutes, I am going to post this uh, video and a blog post on my blog, and you'll be able to download a behavior journal template there. I will also put this in the files section of the group. So click the link in the description of this video if you're catching the replay, or you can just go to the corkboardonline.com slash behavior journal to get connected with that. Remember, you are a great parent doing great things. I hope you have a fantastic week.